What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video, my first official 2K22 My Team video. Today, we're going to be looking at defensive settings and which ones you guys should be running in fives to create the best defense possible. This has worked for me over the past two, K, two, two Ks in My Team and play now, and it's something that I, I always set at the start of my game. Unfortunately, in 22, still this year, we can't set them in the main menu, so we can't have consistent settings without having to go in and change them before the games, but right now, I'll show you guys the settings in a game of draft with this is day one by the way this is my first day i wanted to get this video out because a lot of people are interested in my defensive settings and it's something i've been hesitating on doing but we'll jump straight in and i'll show you guys what i do before each game all right guys just to show you my lineup here just show you that it isn't good at all we've got um we've got sapphire chancy billups here's our best player here pretty much we have a few sapphires and the rest are, uh, are not too good at all this is draft mode so this is day one so these settings will work throughout the entirety of my team i can promise you that I used this in competitions, whether it was playing on delay across to American competitions or here in Australasia, here competitions. We uh, It works across everything. So I'll show you guys the defensive settings here. Now, on ball pressure, don't, don't need to touch team focus up the top. On ball pressure, I always set the tight. Now, this means that if I'm off balling or if I, um, I run a zone personally, if you guys know me, I run a zone, I run a 2-3 zone, cringe all you want at that, but that is how I win games, running a 2-3 zone, reading lanes, sort of stuff like that. Now, when the player has the ball, maybe I'm putting going for a passing lane. I want to make sure that the on-ball defender is putting as much pressure on as possible. And off-ball, I have it set to tight as well. Both of them tight. Smother, deny ball. They can obviously get back, to, back door quite a lot if you set it all the way to deny ball. That's why I like putting them both to tight. Now, for force direction, it's always middle. I don't want them to go baseline because if people are smart, they'll get reverse animation, stuff like that. On-ball screen, I have it go over. I have to speed up a little bit here because we're on a pause timer. Hedging, I have no hedge. Uh, on-ball screen, go over. All of the them go over and no attach for uh, for stay attached. I don't want that at all. And now over going over screens is the best thing possible. You don't want people going under. You want it to go over. Force them to drive into your big man, especially if you're playing a two three zone. You don't want to touch any anything else here. That's all you want to touch. You want to go down to screen help rules. Set it to no help. That will help your corners not folding in. That will help people not coming in with people driving a five out. That will assist you there. And then when you go down now to transition defense, I go to no threes. Makes people force to a two. I don't want people to get a three because three is more than two. I don't want them to getting threes. And if it needs be, I can drive in and I can help with a defender in the paint if need be. So no threes is what I said to. The rest, offensive settings, it is completely up to you. I run my own thing if I have the option to. I have it neutral and neutral pretty much. And then Hawks 2018 is my freelance. But besides that, that's all you would really need to do. Controller settings, obviously... This time of the year, I need to change that all up. But that's all that you pretty much need to do for defensive settings. We'll jump into the game now, and I'll show you guys situations where these settings come into effect. All right, guys, before we get in the game, uh, this is me while I'm editing. I'm currently editing the video you're watching. Um, I happen to have my webcam on the right-hand side of the screen, as I did for the settings, and it ends up covering the little menu screen that comes up when you press uh, the left on the D-pad to bring up the 2-3 zone on man-to-man. -man. So I do apologize for that. Just know that every time I was setting it to 2-3 zone, nothing else. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video. All right, so our first possession here on defense was set to a 2-3 zone. I'm still getting used to the menu screen here. Um, as you can see, like, I mean, obviously our sand's going to be sitting paint. If we set to a 2-3 zone, you can see there, Bill Lambeer, I'm telling you right now, Bill Lambeer is one of the worst players in this game so far. Sapphire Bill Lambert, absolutely terrible. He, he fouls so often. He doesn't play defense right. I really don't like him, but unfortunately, I can't choose my players in draft pretty much. We get the choice of three out of five players, but we'll jump back on defense after we've had our offensive possession. I'll show you guys properly how this defense works. All right, I want to make sure we're set to a 2-3 zone here. I'm still getting used to the defensive menus on here. Uh, you can see Bill Lambert, once again, being way too slow to get back on defense, but once you get those kind of overpowered players, you can see I can trust my centers down there, my power forward because basically as soon as someone in the paint gets the ball they're going to crash straight away so those three players so the small forward the power forward and the center will all go down and crash on the plays down under great defense from here there on the pick and roll i want to make sure i'm set to the um the two three zone again play it with my players make sure i get them in position you basically want to know where each of the players will sit as well so i know that my small forward will sit in the bottom left corner or sit on the left uh free throw extended almost and my uh so they go point guard the top of the left key the shooting guard the top right um and then the uh, small forward bottom left 
power forward bottom right and center in the middle. Also, if your center isn't that good, like he doesn't have high defensive IQ, I mean, my belly Bill Lambie doesn't have any IQ, it appears, um, then you'll you'll also... Be, I, I can't score. Can I score here? Can I, can, I can't score at all. Yeah, so one thing you'll notice here, like your... Um, your center, if he has a low defensive IQ, he will get a lot of defensive three seconds. So you may need to make sure that you're also using peripherals to look down the bottom and see if he needs to come out at all. I can see that pass to the left wing. I can see right there, there's the corner positions, jump out with Pascal, and that's a red contest. That's a perfect contest for me. And Bill Lambert can't get a rebound, but that sort of defense there where you read, use your peripheral vision to see those corner positions and see if you need to jump out to them. And if need be, you do that then you can contest it if need be. And the contest system this year so far is quite good. I've really enjoyed it so far. So it's quite similar to next gen last year. Um, and I've also noticed, this is something that a lot, a lot of people will talk about. When you go to jump and contest a shot, you'll actually jump around the play this year. I don't know if it's a new animation that 2K have added, but you'll actually jump around to avoid a foul, which is very good for people like me that run a 2-3 zone. When I'm jumping at people all the time, I'll be jumping around them automatically, which is very, very good for me. Uh, but overall, like this is the 2-3 zone. I'll show you guys a few more examples throughout this video it's a bit difficult to explain kind of face to face in like a 10 minute video overall the best thing to do is honestly jump into a game of domination and test out a 2-3 zone test out iconing so the biggest thing that i can recommend is icon switching between players on defense it will, it will be an absolute lifesaver for you because majority of the time if you press x it's not going to put you to the player that you want to choose pretty much so iconing x to your point guard circle to your shooting guard square to your small forward triangle to your power forward and uh, L1, L1 or L2 for your center. Learn that against AIs in domination. Get that XP in domination. Learn it that way. You can see there, I icon that fast that you can't even see it. Like by this point, I, I know if I want to go to my small forward, I can go across there to my small forward by pressing square. You just basically have to, it's, it's, it's muscle memory. It comes down to muscle memory, honestly. You can see, oh, I nearly is still there. It's basically reading corner right there. You can see like, you will re make these reads so much easier. You will make them so easy by the end of the year. I can see the corner there. I was stuck down the bottom, unfortunately. But look, great defense possession there. And that's, that's pretty much it. You will get people so frustrated, all right? People call it toxic. Sure, call it toxic. There's a lot worse things in this game that are worse. But look, at the end of the day, this is a style of defense I like to play, and it wins. It honestly, I, can, I season like six or season seven of my team last year, in Unlimited, I didn't lose a game. I lost like one game, and that was it. And look, the more practice you get, the better you'll be at it. Um, whether or not you use these defensive settings in a 2-3 zone is completely up to you. And the day, it's it's very um it, it, it is up to you. You can use them in man-to-man. -man. Look, I, I haven't had the chance to properly put my, my skills to the test yet against prop, the top players, but I really think these defensive settings are some of the best that you can get in the game. You can see there, look, reading these steals, having that off-ball defense set to tight and the on-ball defense set to tight really gets my players in good positions when they're doing um, on-ball. You can see here I've got it set to no threes, so they want to make sure they stay around the perimeter. And I'm going to keep rotating around. I can see the corner position there. I'll icon to my um, to my uh, small forward, and I'll move over there. It's simple stuff like that that will win you defensive possessions, pretty much. You, you will be able to stop your opponent scoring if you read what they're going to do before you. It's very, very uh, difficult when you're starting off. I highly recommend do not play online if you're testing this out. Like, if you're if you're trialing this, even if you're trialing a 2-3 zone with different settings, do not go on online and, and do this. People will make fun of you. People will absolutely ruin your offense. Practice against AIs is the best thing. We all started somewhere. Practice against your AIs and then move to online. Do it, do it, don't do unlimited straight away. Maybe do limited when the limited weekend comes around. Do stuff like that, and that'll help you get better at the game. One thing that I will let you guys know about, especially on 2K22, which is something I found out today, when you try to set a 2-3 zone, uh, you have to pretty much do it every single possession. I used to have the habit back in 2K21 and 2K20, I used to set it like automatically, just like a muscle memory thing to make sure everyone's in position. But this year, you actually have to do it every single possession. It never saves, which is something that I hope gets fixed. But it's very, very frustrating. I'll show you guys an example very shortly. Um, but yeah, you pretty much have to set it every single time. All right, so you guys can see here, this is just off an inbound. My players aren't set. So I actually have to go down and reset the um, reset the 2-3 the, the two, three zone from a man-to-man, -man, which is quite frustrating. Uh, but you can see here, it's basically just hustling around. I could see that pass of the hash was going to happen. If he chose to pass somewhere else, I had to deal with it. But that was always going to be an option for him. And so I moved my player across there. It's always about moving your players and getting to the... Uh, 
the open spots pretty much covering and reading the lanes of the open spots. All right, I'm pretty sure I've worked out what the issue is. So pretty much whenever you miss a shot or you like turn the ball over, it's not a made shot. You will have to set your defense. So whenever it's a quote unquote transition defense, you pretty much have to set your two three zone, which is something I don't really like at all. Well. I, I, I feel like your players should automatically go to the two three. See like this, see, see my players are hustling back if I, if I can't control them properly, they're not going to play. They're not going to play the way that I want them to. And so, unfortunately, that's something that hopefully will get fixed very shortly. I don't know if enough people will like comment about it or if there's people from 2K watching this potentially. But at the end of the day, it might still be in the game. It'll be something I have to get over as I can't make a damn this build MB man. I, I honestly I don't like this card at all. Another another situation here. Like I've I've said it now, and so my players will be scrambling around for a little bit. I can see these passes are going to happen to the corner, back to the hashes. See what I mean? Like you can, you can, you can see these happening to the corner. I can. See, he's only got one option. That's the, that's why I always push them. If I can here, I'm always going to make them go back baseline. Although I set my setting to make them go middle, I'm going to push them baseline as much as I can because that means they've only got one way to go. They're either going to throw it across to the baseline where the other player will catch it, or they're going to throw it to hash, and I'll be waiting for them to hash. So. Very, very, uh, just practice. Practice is all I can recommend. Use these settings. If you're going to run it with a 2-3 zone, run it with a 2-3 zone. And make sure you get used to this this annoying setting. This annoying, it's not a glitch, but this, this, this instance where you have to set it in every single possession. It's very annoying to me. Might not be annoying for you. Uh, but yeah, test it out on, uh, on AIs first and then jump across to some online gameplay. There we have it, guys. Those are my defensive settings for NBA 2K22, as well as the previous games if you're playing them as well. Um, I know the explanation was wasn't the greatest in the world. It's very hard to explain it in such a short video, as I said, and uh, I kind of tend to ramble on when I'm, I'm trying to explain stuff like that. So I do apologize for that, but hopefully you guys understand the brief sort of details of what I was trying to get across. Uh, those defensive settings can be used in a man-to-man in a -man or a 2-3. If you want to run a 3-2 zone for some reason, you can also play them in a 2-3 zone, as well as using them in a the press as well. If, you, if you're into using a full court or half court press, use those defensive settings. Those will actually help you get a lot of steals as well and reading those lanes. The main thing is practice against AIs. Practice, practice, practice against the computer. And if you can read those computer passes, you'll be able to read people passes. It, it, it's not a huge difference between the way the computer and the way that the people play. So overall, guys, I thank you very much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. It's my first 2Go22 video. Uh, we will be starting a no money spent count. I do have it already sorted. Uh, we'll be starting that later this week. So make sure you stick around for that. I won't be doing a pack opening of the Colossus packs. Uh, uh, sorry, of the, uh, yeah, of the Colossus packs. Deluxe packs. I was going to do one, but I don't think it's worth this off the rip. They're so cheap. The cards are so cheap already. So I highly recommend going picking those up if you haven't already. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.